We're back. Hello. Back in Shoreditch. Back in Shoreditch. I'm Jem Jalal. Tobias Mayer. And we're in a different place in the same building. That's right. Still in this very interesting spot, which is becoming a kind of like our home, I guess, isn't it? No? Is it will it? be. Yeah, yeah, it could be. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Getting there. Quite a strong word for two uh, nomads. Can I call you a nomad? You are right at <laughs> What are we talking about? Uh, Agile delivery manager. Oh, uh, yeah. You love that term, yeah. right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about this up there, and, and people would ask on the LinkedIn, they were like, can, <clears throat> can somebody tell us what an Agile delivery manager is? Or the other one is Agile delivery lead. What the hell is it? Mm. This is what somebody asked me in the inbox and on the thread. I don't know, what's your impression of that? Well, I, I actually don't know what it is. Um, I, you know, when I was a software developer, I never met one. Um, okay. I met release engineers, which might be something kind of similar to mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm. But they were just members of the team of uh -huh. developers, and they could do other stuff too. Okay. And they weren't really managing anything. Mm. What about that they were serving. Okay. Yeah, I suppose there was a service role to some extent. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so I don't know. I don't know what an, an agile delivery manager is. I don't know what an agile anything is actually, Jim. To be honest, I don't know what an agile project manager is, or an agile developer, or mm. an agile release manager, or an agile executive. Or yeah. Uh, I don't know. What are they? I, I don't know. I just <laughs> think of when, when, <laughs> when you put uh, when you put the word in front of. Um, an agile project manager, I know this is another conversation in itself, I just think of someone who went from predictive thinking to, a, to more adaptive thinking, somebody who went from um, command and control to servant leadership, and of course even that I in itself is quite a, a simplistic view. I mean, of course there was servant yeah. leadership where, before agile came along. I'm just saying though, yeah. it might be some sort of expression to do with, and I think you know this, just the philosophy, what they stand for, so an agile delivery manager I think the history comes from Fortworks actually. They used to call it, it used to be iteration manager. And then so, so hey, we work in increments wow. or work in iterations, yeah. we use feedback. So someone has to manage it all? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, and I, so some, some of the people that I've met who do this role have said, I go in as an agile delivery lead or manager. I was like, okay. I have domain knowledge in the business and technology. I was like, okay. And there's no, there's no such thing as a product owner. So I'm responsible for the outward Why? part. So, okay, they're not mm. doing scrum. So they're, they're, no, no, they're, they're not doing, doing scrum. They're doing agile, whatever that is. Yeah, so there's an organization which I won't mention. They didn't believe scrum masters had any value. Mm. So instead they said, we want to take on some agile ways of, of working and we can unpack that. Um, but it doesn't mean we need to do, just because we're not having a scrum master role, it doesn't mean we need to do away with some of the ideas. So we'll do the daily stand up. We'll have a review. Oh, okay. We'll have a retro. We'll use the mechanics. But the agile delivery leader or manager acts as a PO and also as a technical lead, which... So you sort of mash all the roles together. Yeah, and, uh, which is interesting. Like old, old roles, new roles, just kind of like yeah. wrap it all up into one big blob and call it delivery manager. Yeah, oh, right. and, and of course, my immediate response was, whoa, that's my, that must be hard being the technical lead and having domain knowledge in a product and you want to empower the team, so does that mean you ever told them what to do? And their response was, sometimes. And I was like, well, do you find that can disempower the team? And he said, sometimes. So I respected the honesty. Mm. Um, but it seems to be a, a very common role out there. You, you see on LinkedIn and loads of job specs, like agile delivery lead. Yeah, you, you see it as a hybrid thing quite often mm. as well. Scrum master slash, there's lots of scrum master slash jobs out there. Yeah, I think, yeah. To, to, you know, I don't know what it is exactly. I mean, that's probably one definition of it you might find a different definition mm. somewhere else. <coughs> um, I, mean, I heard yeah. some recently, agile, agile business analysts. Agile business. It's just people just tack on the word agile in front of any other role and suddenly they're... They're agile now? Suddenly they're agile, I know, yeah. Is it, is it like an aspiration? Because when I think of, this, say, an old school BA, mm. somebody, that, somebody that would create technical specs, mm -hmm. somebody that wouldn't collaborate with the team much, somebody that would hand off lots of stuff, Mm. Are you with me? And when I think of someone saying Agile BA, I think what they might be trying to express is, hey, I understand how to work in a just, you know, just-in-time approach. Right. I'm more collaborative with the team. Yeah, I, I feel like that's what they're trying to express when they put this word. And, and maybe they're not even there, but it might even be the aspiration. It might be, yeah. You know, I may no, be being that, generous. Yeah, no, that, no that's a fair way of looking at it. I think that there's good intent. 
Yeah, and yeah, I, it I doesn't I always get lived out, but there is good intent. But yeah. but that's a bit of a, a bit of a tangent to this release manager. Mm. So there are a lot of roles like that, as you've pointed out, iteration managers, really. Is it roles with the term agile and manager, or agile and lead, and it some other words. Is that what catches you the most? Yeah, and well, I think all of them actually. Um, mm. I think all of them are excuses for the scrum master role. So okay. people would like to do scrum, but mm. they can't see the value of a scrum master. Okay. Right? They just can't. Um, because their understanding seems to be limited to someone who um, sets up a daily stand up every day, and mm. that's about it. You know, runs a retrospective once a month or once every two weeks. Mm -hmm. And uh, it seems like people who are doing Scrum don't actually even read the Scrum Guide because the Scrum Guide is actually very clear on what the Scrum Master role is and it's a, a fairly major role Yes, if it's done properly. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an organisational wide role. Mm. And we talked about this in the Scrum Master versus Agile Coach yep, talk yep. that we did. That was the first one we did, yeah. Yeah, and um, people don't know what a Scrum Master is and why don't they know? Because they don't actually bother to find out. <laughs> it's, it's probably as easy as that really, yeah. isn't it? If you actually bother to find out. Yeah. What could this role be? But then the people that do that still still have a hard time with it because it doesn't mm. fit. The, it doesn't fit the, the, the corporate skeleton. No, it doesn't hang nicely on there. You know, so um, it it doesn't fit the HR box. Maybe, mm. or, or it, who do you who do they report to? You know, what is what is this role exactly? Yeah, sure, they have yeah. to influence here and they have to influence there. But but you know, the bottom line is how do you measure them? That's always what it comes down to, isn't it? How do you measure them? Is that what it goes back to? This kind of like this, this Tayloristic manufacturing mm. mentality. If if I've got to take on this, if I'm going to create or accept this new role, whoa, this this is so different from what I know. Yeah. Let's not have that role. Let's not have it. So look at look at the title, yeah. right? Release manager, agile release manager. Right? Yeah. It's got it's got metrics built into it, into the name, hasn't it? Yep. Is it or just like, how many releases did you do? in the last period that we're measuring you on. Because and Agile Delivery Manager. Yeah, and how Agile were you? You might have some criteria around that. And, and, but it's mostly that, how much did you release? Did you release things? If you did, you get points. And if you didn't, you get... No points. Negative points, yeah. So um, we have these job titles that sort of build in the metrics into them. But Scrum Master mm. is a bit harder. What yeah. do you measure a Scrum? You can't measure someone on mastery, can you? No, you and can't. If you're not reading the Scrum Guide, you certainly can't measure them on the Scrum Guide. It says so, um, uh, this is, but this is a double edged sword. Well, not, I don't know, maybe for some, it is a double edged sword. And that the great thing about the Scrum Master role is because people aren't measured in, in this binary sense, the Scrum Master is not going to be serving their own goals to hit those metrics. Yeah, but yeah. in the other sense, oh, I've hired a Scrum Master, how do I get my return on investment? Mm. But again, that's probably symptomatic of somebody who doesn't understand knowledge work or what a Scrum Master role is, mm. you know. so. I don't know. I've never done the agile delivery role. I've, I've met peers who have, mm -hmm. and they say they're doing agile. And often what I hear is the mechanistic part of agile. Are you with me? So yeah. they'll talk about small batch versus big batch. Mm -hmm. They'll talk about being able to develop a, a minimum viable product. Um, and so these ideas are from like lean, really. So as we were saying before, should it be called like a, a lean? A, a lean delivery manager or a, you know, because if, if that's what you're boring, that's what you're using, mm. the manufacturing mechanistic mindset, that's fine. And I, I want to have views on you haven't crossed the chasm because working in a manufacturing floor and writing software is very different, right? Yeah. So maybe they should be called um, lean, I don't know, uh, delivery managers. <laughs> I'm not being facetious. Yeah, because yeah, like, yeah. that's what you're using, right? You're using the mechanics, you're not using the... We are, yeah, it is, it is mechanical. And the way we measure is mechanical and it's, it's local optimization. So even mm. when people talk about, you know, systems thinking, yep. they're not really talking about systems thinking, Gemma, because most of them are talking about systems within the organisation, the whole system of the organisation. Oh, I've experienced this. So it's not, that's not the system. The system's way bigger than that. And there was a lovely... Um, article I read recently by a man called Sam Chaltain, who's an American educator, enlightened okay. American educator, and it was okay. about um, sustainable fish farming and how that related to, to, the, to education. Mm -hmm. And the question was, how do you measure sustainable fish farming? That's the, you know, the, how do you measure education? That's we don't measure question. education by saying, do you pass this test at the age of five? Yep. You know, it's something much bigger, surely. Sure. And um, when he talked to this man who was running this sustainable fish farm, he said, how do you, how do you measure if it's successful and mm. if it's sustainable? And he said, by the colour of the flamingo's bellies. That was his measurement. As in like the systemic yeah. effects yeah. along the because chain? Because all of through the chain. And if the flamingos are healthy, then the whole chain is working. Wow. And it's, so it's far, far removed. It's a very, there's a lot of indirection going on there. 
in terms of measurement. We try and measure directly. We try and go right to the source. You're a release manager. How many releases did you do? Mm. You did 10. Good. You know, last, last month you only did 9. You did 10. You're better. Right. right. But it's meaningless. It's utterly meaningless. It's like, right? back to counting lines of code. Yeah. It's that same mentality. It's a bit like that, isn't it? Yeah. So what's the, what is the overall effect? What is the, how does that piece of software fit into the ecosystem? Yeah. The bigger ecosystem. What's what the impact our, of it? Yeah. So what, what Sam Trail Tame was asking, uh, asking educators, he said, what's your pink flamingo mm. in the education system? What's our pink flamingo in the work environment, in the corporate world? And it isn't how many releases did you do? And I, and I, I can just begin to imagine why people won't even want to answer that question because it means changing too much of the system yeah. and it also means your transformation has got to take longer than three months. Exactly, yeah. yeah do do yeah. you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So as soon as you start to measure people in the short term, they will perform to those measurements and they won't do that what they need to do. That's and fine. that is especially that's true of a role mm. like the Scrum Master role. All right? If you're setting targets and, and you're measuring against those targets, you'll never do what you need to do, mm. which is really uh, unmeasurable in the traditional sense. It is. We need to seek the flamingos in order to measure that. And it takes time, like you said. Uh, that's, it's so great that we don't actually know the answer to the question. So what is it as your delivery manager? Yeah, we don't know what well, it is. We, we, don't, we don't know, but I think <laughs> what we've, right. your and it, and there's, we don't ever claim to have answers to, to questions. No. In fact, we try and steer away from when people ask us, say, give us the answer to this. How to questions, yeah. yeah. How we, do we, I? We love the what about questions. Yeah. We do a lot of what about you, but maybe that is the, I don't know, there's something we can offer? Seek your pink flamingo, is that what it was? Seek your pink flamingos, yeah. Find it. Yeah. And, I don't know if the agile delivery manager role is doing that, and it genuinely is. If it genuinely is doing that, okay. But if you're hiring people just to manage the mechanics and the process and the tools, maybe call it lean, um, because mm. I I think uh, the the inspiration behind some of agile is a blessing and also a curse. In that the blessing that there are some great parts to it in the humanistic stuff and optimizing process and delivering value, but the curse is a little bit like sometimes we don't cross the chasm. Yeah, you introduced that uh, idea of the, the chasm between um, production work, yeah. production line work, that's right. manufacturing work, yeah, like and knowledge line. work. Yeah. Yeah. And um, that, that's, the, that's the chasm that doesn't really get talked about that much. Mm. But that's an interesting one, yeah. How many people are crossing that chasm? When you cross it, everything looks different on the other side. Of course. It's, it's not more of the same. It's utterly different, right? Uh, and I get it right. Maybe it's easy if you're coming, if you're 20 years from a, a traditional mindset, which is people being subservient, and it's all about efficiency, it's uncomfortable to talk about the humanistic side. I mean, recently in my LinkedIn post, somebody said, look, sometimes you just need to just effing get it done. Okay, I thought, okay. And the squidgy or softy, softy stuff needs to be forgotten about. And that was mm. symptomatic of maybe someone who gets the terminology, mm. the mechanics, but the essence behind what the Agile thing was about may, I don't know, that may come later for them. I don't know. I don't know either. Yeah, I'll tell you what, though. I, I'm ready to wrap this one up. Pink flamingos, guys. We, Seek them out. Yep. Yeah. Thanks. Um, feel free to interact. Please, please get involved in the discussion. Maybe you've got the answers. We don't know. We, we often get educated by, by the public on LinkedIn. Yeah, so we'd also appreciate if you could subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's right. Um, £800 Agile Gorilla. Did we mention that at the start? Okay. Cool. Yeah. They should know by now, right? I think so. All right. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Thank you.